my name is Anna, Anna Seymour, and my sign name is Anna. It's one finger pointed up to the roof, next to my cheek on the side of the face, with three circles down to my shoulder. I am standing next to a podium. I have a bob of dark curly hair, brown eyes, red lips. I'm about 165 centimeters tall. I'm very petite. I have black Levi jeans on, thick black wedge heels, with black and gold button-up shirt. <laughs> I'm always asked two questions in my life, always two questions. I get asked from different people, especially hearing people. The first is, can you lip read? My answer to this is, 30% of all sounds are visible on the lips. This means the next 70% of that, that's all guesswork. Which means in condensed, no, it's impossible to fully lip read for anyone. And two, how do you dance when you can't hear the music? My answer to this is, you don't need music to dance. You don't need music to move. Yes, it can be fun to move with music, but in contemporary dance, this is the study of the body and the study of how the body moves through space. I'm a contemporary dancer. I am from Melbourne, Australia. And I was born profoundly deaf, but I come from a hearing family. So my focus is on contemporary dance. That is my main focus and that is my passion. I work in other fields too. So I have been asked to share a little bit about my experiences and my work as a professional dancer and as a professional dancer who is deaf. I will show some photos of my projects that I've participated in so far. But first, I work as a freelance dancer for various dance companies and as an independent choreographer and for independent choreographers. I work um, in different art formats such as films, photography and stage performance and I love to collaborate with various artists. I will start new start as a new role as a creative, def, uh, creative director for a project called the Delta Project, a company. This is a dance company in Melbourne that involves both deaf and hearing artists. I, found, I first founded that in 2000 and two, 2012. And I co-founded that company with a deaf choreographer from London. Her name is Jo Dunbar. This dance company has both deaf and hearing dancers with deaf and hearing choreographers. So I arrived here, I've arrived at this point where I am now and to be honest, there's been a lot of effort, a lot of work involved, a lot of sweat and a lot of tears. I started dancing when I was six, jazz, tap, ballet. But when I became older, the ballet culture, whew, it's not very inclusive, specifically for deaf. There was no interpreting in the classroom, no feedback of what the teacher said. Plus, I would miss the start, starting of music. I was always behind the music, I was always behind the choreography, and I didn't feel welcome. I didn't feel included in the class. I saw the students talking, and I did not know what was said. I was pushed from that world, and often I would go home crying. And I thought, no, that's enough. I can't do this, I'm out. But then in... When I was 20, I saw a ballet performance by a company called Bangara Dance Theatre Company. They are an indigenous dance company, all indigenous dancers from Australia. I was blown away. I knew, at that point, I knew that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to pursue my career as a professional dancer, but I did not know how I'd do it, but I knew that I had to make it happen. So I moved to Melbourne, Australia, 
and I studied a Bachelor of Contemporary Dance. I started to get involved in the dance scene in Melbourne. And that was oof, 11 years ago. So now, my life as a dancer and as a choreographer, yeah, it's amazing, it's good, but mm, it's very busy, very stressful too. There's a lot of admin involved and funding applications and all of that work and that never stops. But like, for example, it's, it's like a marathon or it's like a sprint, it's, it's like both. Really, it's not the dance and the art that's, that frustrates me at all. It's the, it's the access. That. The battle. The battle for access. That is a huge burden upon me. It drains me. It makes me tired. Again and again and always, I have to find the funding for interpreters just so I can participate in professional developments or keep up my training. Plus, the networking with other dancers, plus interpreting for projects. I'm always the one that is responsible and that is always left to me to organise to organize the funding and to organise the scheduling for interpreters, to call them up, to book them, to make that happen. I am super busy with that and it, and it makes it hard to focus on my art. I lose that time to focus on my art and I always have to explain why. Why is the interpreter there? I remember my mum told me a story. When she found out I was deaf when I was a child, when I was born, I got a letter from the teacher, teacher of the deaf. She said, deaf is like the invisible disability. If you see me in the street, you don't know who I am and you would not think that I have any kind of barrier. It can be hard to explain to people what I need, that I need support. I know a lot of you have the same experiences or similar experiences. I know you all work really hard to arrive to where you are at now. I'm really excited to be here I'm really excited to be here with all of you and so we can share our experiences and share our stories so we can somehow reduce that burden that is upon us, that burden of access. And so we can focus on our art and get our, get our art done. I will show some photos now a little, and I'll talk a little bit about projects that I've been involved in. How much time do I have? So we're out of time? I'm sorry. Come up to me, say hi to me, let's talk. Uh, thank you for, thank you for your time.